Thank you for helping me to reach the 700,000 subscriber mark. Right now, I suspect the actual figure is vigorously vibrating with violent variation around this figure, as everybody unsubscribes and subscribes again. Hopefully. At the time of saying this, CSGO's active player base is significantly less than 700,000, so I'm not quite sure he's subscribing to me. But thank you all the same. Now I hate to piggyback important CSGO updates, so let's move on to the beta update now, which was released a day or so ago. I already have a video covering the next shots, and hope to also cover the changes to the sound in a standalone video, but this video you're watching will sort of cover everything. I want to start with this change. It wasn't immediately noticeable what was different. Try as I might, I couldn't recreate what was so annoying about how the system used to be, but I'm sure that this update will be appreciated come the end of the round when you've got half a second to pick up an orb. We've all been there, trying to pick up an orb and ending up with nothing, or worse still, that bison that was hidden in the bushes close by. A lot of work has been done to the sounds, bringing us closer to the standards set in the 90s, and indeed, with Half-Life 1. Remember when your footsteps and gunshots would get all echoey and vents in that game? Well, now it happens in CSGO as well. This is particularly noticeable on Nuke. Here are a few examples. I'm tempted to make a video about this because I do love the way it's all headed. For now, let's just say that it's led to a lot of speculation about what has been made louder and quieter. Had footsteps been quietly adjusted without the patch notes telling us? David, an employee at Valve, cleared it all up with this Reddit post here. No, the footsteps haven't been changed. And from what I can gather, they have to tell the game how loud each sound sample is so that it knows how much echo to add to it. It doesn't change how loud the original sound is. Think of it as HDR support but for audio. Although, saying that, the patch notes do say that the vent sound has changed and can now be heard from further away. Here are a few comparisons before and after. Damn you, helicopter. As you may already be aware, the way the neck hitbox works has changed because previously, headshots from behind would sometimes only count as a body shot. This was because the neck hitbox counted as the body, but now, if it hits the neck and then the head, it will count as a headshot. Small change, but it works nicely. I covered this in depth yesterday if you'd like to check the video out. And there are some map changes as well. Nuke's main change is one that I already covered a while back when they rolled it out to short nuke, and predicted back then that it would also be applied to the main nuke, so this should come as no surprise to you. Still. For those of you not up to speed, it's the change to vents. Here, it no longer connects to the B site, and instead comes out just around the corner from the other vent opening. To further simplify B, they've removed Toxic entirely. Once again, already covered. What's new is this solid yellow background to the yellow crane in B, maybe to improve player visibility. The boxes at B have been moved further back towards the wall to stop people from abusing the small line of sight over the larger crate to headshot people entering the site from here. The gap between the silos at A has finally been blocked up, because it was too fun to sit at the site and to snipe people through here. Player movement has been smoothed out. Not sure how much this covers, but it does at least fix the clip brushes that were left in on the roof here, which would make players bump when running over the corners of these pipes. And there are numerous optimizations for lower settings, presumably because this is one of the more demanding maps to run. Moving on to Overpass, they lowered volume of ambient sounds. Here it was before, with knife swipes for reference. And here it is after. And now let's flick between them. Yeah. The added grenade and player collision refers to this wall here. Before there was only bomb clipping, so grenades had lots of bits that they could bounce off unpredictably, and your character could get stuck under the fence and would bounce off these planks a bit as well. But now it's all been smoothed out so that grenades bounce into the bomb site, and your player slips through these planks as if they weren't even there although these planks will still deflect grenades. Be careful. And as much as I wanted to find the spooky shadow fading, I couldn't. Here's a comparison between new and old, high and very low graphics settings. See if you can spot the difference. Editing the map, I noticed a new ground and wall texture, so I'm guessing that there's some kind of bug with certain hardware, but I really don't know with this one. And on that disappointing note, thank you to Valve for this update, and thanks to you for 700,000 subscribers. To see my 600,000 subscriber celebration, click here. And for a blast from the past, 
check out this video of mine where I show over pass in its early days. Oh, and this video where I was right about the nuke changes.